Hey there everybody, Hero Strain here. Today I'm bringing you something quite a bit different from what I've ever done before. Today I'm going to give you my tips and tricks when it comes to lighting in Source Filmmaker. So, first thing you got to notice about these shots is that I'm going to be working with Meet the Heavy. And the first thing you need to notice is that the lighting is everywhere almost all at once. So if we enter the work camera here and we move around a little bit, you can see that there is a light source coming from behind the heavy, as you can see this line here. And I believe that's the basic for the basic lighting for any model, any of the TF2 models that are coming. Like in the material files, you'll see that they have these special lighting formats that they use. And you got to keep those in consideration whenever you're lighting a full scene. So the first thing you need to do, or the first thing you should consider doing, is creating a new camera. So I'm going to create a new camera. And here's actually what I'm going to do. I'm going to go to the motion editor. I'm going to copy the samples and then select our new camera and paste the samples in there so that our new camera will be a copy of the other one. So. From here, usually for any shot that I work with, I bring the tone map scale down to default. This will make everything darker and it'll give you more room to put in your lights. So I'm going to add the first light. And the first thing you should know about lighting is that you need to make sure that you put your lights where actual lights are. So see this light up here, I'm going to use this as a reference point for our first light. Point it, bring it up to the spot near nearer than farther than from where I want to go expand the light as much as I can point it at the heavy so that you can ensure that he's getting the light and then you can see here already the scene is becoming a little bit more than what it was before so I'm going to bring the shadow filter size all the way down now when you bring shadow filter size that low you'll see it creates a crap ton of pixels in the shadows now you can fix this by bringing up the uh, shadow map scale in the uh, SFM launch options, but that can bring your hardware down a few notches. It's kind of difficult for it to run such dense shadow maps. So what I do is I bring the radius up a little bit, if not a lot. Usually it's a lot, but in close proximities you want to keep it down low. So what the radius does, it doesn't make any change to the scene as you can see here in the motion editor, editor, but if we switch to the clip editor and we check on the progressive refinement setting, you got to make sure that's on. And you also want to bring the progressive refinement up. I usually use 128 by 128. It's a nice round number to work with. And make sure sub pixel jitter AA is also on. That helps out with the uh, final look and you can already see those shadows are very smooth and they look quite significantly better than what we used to have. If you can even consider what we used to have anything. So then now we have our light in there, but you see the scene is overly orange. It's, there's a lot of browns and reds, but it's basically an orange scene. And this white light doesn't quite bring that feel. So we're just going to bring the blue down just a little bit gotta be in the motion editor gotta bring the blue down and then the green comes down too but we just want to get that to a nice balance so we get an orange light rather than a white one because white lights are fairly uncommon so then we set our scene to render again and it's looking pretty good so far but the light isn't adding enough enough depth to him so we're gonna add a new light and we're gonna bring it down below the ground. You can't see him right here, but if you disable the shadows on your light and then look at our scene, you can see that the light is on him and that's what we want. So I'm gonna bring the intensity of the light almost down, almost down to zero. And that will give you the effect that the light is bouncing off the floor and back into the heavy because light is really bouncy. It goes from place to place it bounces off objects and into our eyes 
so it bounces off the floor and back into the heavy into her eyes. And since it's bouncing off the floor, off the heavy, that's two bounces, the light becomes much less intense. So the light coming off the floor is going to be a lot less intense unless otherwise specified like if there's a light on the floor. You know, a specific light showing on the floor. So we bring that down and we also want to make sure that the light is a bit stronger in color than the original one. Not always will you need to do this, but it does add something to this scene in particular. Just fiddle with the lighting, fiddle with everything that you can to make sure that that heavy is underlit. So now we have two lights lighting the scene and it's looking pretty good so far. Now we need one more light under this circumstance. And we're going to bring it right behind him. We're going to take it pretty far away. And then we want to zoom in on him so that just the camera area is actually showing. So now we have our light behind him. You can see it's making a little difference right there on his neck. But, you know, that's, that's not much. So we're going to bring the intensity up a little bit. Bringing the shadow filter size all the way down. And I'm going to bring the radius to maximum. Because this light is... Uh, rim light. It's not really supposed to be super intense or super thick. So what bringing the radius up does, it fills out the light. So what radius does basically is with it completely off, the light as you can see is one point. One infinitesimally small point in space. So what the radius does, it increases that and when it goes into the clip editor, it'll add more of the light in the same position pointing to the same spot in a circular area to make the light bigger. So with a maximum radius the light is very big and it'll fill the area out and dim the light a little bit. The radius dims lights. So if we see here the radius on his neck is looking okay but we want it to be a bit more intense. So I'm actually gonna bring the linear attenuation just to see where I'm hitting. So I'm going to bring the light a little higher up. And that looks maybe, let's see. Yeah, I think that's about what we want. We go to render. See now the light is actually hitting his shoulder just like how we want it to, but it's too bright. So I'm going to bring the intensity back down quite a bit. See how the final looks again. Too much, too much. Okay. So there's our rim light. So now. Our heavy is basically lit up just how I wanted it to be. So now you see, look at the background. Since we have the tone map scale all the way down, the background is way too dark and we need to fill that out a bit more. So I'm gonna add another light and I'm gonna take this one outside. See that window there? I'm gonna send this light straight through that window. And when you bring a light so far away from the map, you wanna make sure that it is tight and not like, way open like that because that will actually disperse the shadows and make the pixels bigger so when you have such map size lighting you want to bring it in so that you can see everything okay now that I have my light in an okay spot I don't know if this is gonna look good until after I turn it onto a volumetric light because it won't cause any difference until it's a volumetric so if we go back into our scene, it doesn't look like we can see it anywhere. At least not yet. There's a very good reason why. You can see our volumetric light is tiny. It isn't reaching nearly far enough to reach the building all the way down here. So I'm going to increase the Z far attenuation and the max distance. Now this is very important that the light is much shorter or at least the uh, field of view is much shorter and smaller because as you increase these your shadows are going to become less and less detailed so I'm going to bring this to like 8,000 because 8,000 sounds like a good number very large number but you know just as long as the volumetric light reaches all the way down to the building so I can't really see the light right now, so I'm going to bring the volumetric intensity as high as I can. It doesn't look like it's reaching just yet. Nope. So I'm actually going to bring the light in and spread it out just a little bit. 
I don't want to lose the Shadow Fidelity just yet. Let's see. This one even visible from the camera. I'm not sure. Looks like it is. The shadow is. The light is coming through. But I think this window might do better for this effect. Let's bring it over. Make sure our light is pointed just right so that it matches up where the sun is. We don't have to specifically match up where the sun is because if you're doing map lighting like this, it doesn't really matter where the sun is because you're basically going to create your own sun. So, volumetric intensity is good. Bring our filter size down. You can already see the, sh the uh, volumetric light is shining now. So we're going to bring, just bring our noise strength down just so we can actually see what our light is doing. You can see it's right there. Very bright, very strong. And I think that's what we're looking for. So let's see. If we go to render it. Light looks pretty smooth. But it's not the right color, so we're going to bring it down to that orange color just the same as the others. So if we go to the render scene, you can see the light looks... Uh, really sharp. So I'm going to bring volumetric intensity down a little bit, but I'm going to bring the linear attenuation up. And that will make the light very visible, just as visible as we want it. Noise strength all the way up so we can get some really good contrast and make the light look a lot more like it's coming through a window. Looks like the light is a little sharp down here at the bottom portion, so I'm going to bring the radius up just a little bit. See if we can smooth that out. Yep, that's looking pretty good. Light up here, light over there. See, now you can see the heavy is actually... He actually has some presence in the scene now. The background isn't all black. So there's one more light that we're going to add, and we're going to fill out the scene just a little bit more. Not much. We don't have to do very much in order to make this work for us, but I'm going to add a light back here because I think back there could definitely use something. We're going to disable the shadows so we don't add any unwanted shadows over around here. I'm going to bring the light down almost all the way, and I think that's pretty good. You can see, you can see the individual bricks, and that's kind of what we want because that gives you a more of a depth. It gives, it gives you more fidelity in the background. So I think that's how this scene is going to be lit, but there is one more very important thing to add to lighting. You want to go into your render, render settings and check ambient occlusion. Now what this ambient occlusion does is it adds little black dots all over your scene. You're going to be able to see them no problem. And they usually don't look very good at the very beginning. So that's why we created a new camera. The old camera only has field of view, focal distance, and aperture visible. I don't remember exactly how to make all the other functions visible, but with this new camera that doesn't really matter. So we're going to go to our render settings, make sure ambient occlusion is checked, and then I'm going to click show the ambient occlusion. That'll give you a very nice view of exactly what the ambient occlusion is doing in the scene. So we have bias, strength, and radius. Bias, it I don't know exact. I don't know exactly how to explain what it does, but you it kind of the lower your bias, the more easily pixels will be seen. Not pixels. I mean geometry will be seen. So you want to bring that up just a little bit. It doesn't really it bring up bringing it up too much can mess up the ambient occlusion, but just keep it at a nice good level. Usually the default isn't high enough. So then you want to bring the strength up. Strength should be up just a little bit more than it is as well, but the radius is what you want to bring down. See, then you you, only, you don't want the ambient occlusion to fill everything, otherwise you're going to significantly increase render time and decrease playback speed. So you want to bring the radius down just enough to give you that good definition there. We're looking at the minigun right now. Because ambient occlusion isn't much of a thing on the heavy right now. So we're going to bring the strength up, down, just until we get that nice gray. We don't want it to be completely black. Because black 
it kind of takes away from the actual lighting of the scene. So if you go and look at the final, it looks pretty good. It's all smooth. The ambient, ambient occlusion is looking pretty good right now. And that's because the depth of field of motion blur is set to a high, higher than not number. So if you if we go to like down to eight, you'll see you can see grain all over the minigun and all over the heavy's teeth and such. In the background, you see all that grain over there. That's what the um, progressive refinement settings do. 128 is just a good number for me because it keeps it in bounds for what my computer can run it at. So we're going to go back into render settings. We're going to disable the ambient occlusion so that we can just see how the scene is going to look with the AO. And I think that's looking pretty good. Hmm. And one more thing we're going to change. We're going to bring the aperture up. I think around halfway should do for the size of this room. And then we're just going to bring the focal distance right onto the heavy's face because we want the heavy to be the focus of this scene. So if we look at the final render, the background is blurry, the minigun is almost in focus, but the heavy is in focus. So I think that is a fine finished product. So a few things I want to say about the lighting first off is that you should count how many lights we have filling the heavy in the scene. We have one light up here. This is known as our fill, our um, main light. And this is our second light, the one underneath the ground that's filling out his shadow. So this is called the fill light. And the third one back here is called the rim light. So we have the main, fill, and rim. If you just follow those three lights and the rules that they follow themselves, you can get really great lighting every time. So, the lights in the back are just incidental. They, they're just there to fill in the rest of the scene to make to give a little bit more emphasis on the Heavy's new lighting. So I think that is a finished product right there. So, thank you guys for watching, and I will be doing another one of these later on for some more scene-specific lighting. So, I will see you guys later.